Good morning. I don't think this is working today. We're going to do this. Good morning. I love this energy, this excitement, and the joy today on this beautiful day. Welcome to Ogden Presbyterian Church. It is a joy to have you all here. Welcome, Chai Lai Presbyterian Church. Welcome, Pastor Brandy Wooten. Um, it is a joy to be together here again. If you are visiting us for the first time, uh, we are doing a special worship service with our neighbors and friends, Chai Lai Presbyterian Church, just down the road. Uh, so welcome, so glad that you are here. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are having a picnic right after and look forward to it. All are welcome. Bathrooms are down this hall through this first set of doors, down a little bit further and on the right hand side. For those who could use it, uh, we do have a hearing loop within our sound system, and we do have an ASL interpreter up front. If you need to be in a better seat to see, please feel free to move. Um, we also have a family comfort room. If anyone needs a wiggle break, back here on the left-hand side is a comfort room. Our nursery is being glamified right now so you can come back in another month or so and see nope. the room. Um, it is beautiful um, friends it is a sincere joy to be here with you all i invite you those who are joining us on zoom that is who you're hearing once in a while uh, welcome as well take a deep breath in and out Welcome to this space. We are here to worship. So let us shake off the busyness of the day and focus our hearts and minds as we listen to the prelude. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, will you join with me in the call to worship? God, we come to you from different places. Our hearts experience different battles. We come to you, faithful one. We come into your embrace. Welcome us into your arms of love. We welcome you into our hearts. God of mercy, we praise you and come to worship you now. Amen. Friends, we are going to be singing a new song. Uh, Adam and Ellen are going to be helping us through this song, um, 10,000 Reasons. in worship and in prayer and in our own spiritual practice at home it is good and holy to pause and to think through your day to think through your week through your month through your life saint ignatius called uh, the daily examine one of the uh, most holiest practices 
as it helps us to connect our soul and our life to God's will. And so this, when we come to the call of confession, a time to confess, we think through our lives and we offer it up to God. The beautiful things, the hard things, the times when we were mad or frustrated or when things did not go well, and we give that to God in confession. So I invite you now into this prayer of realignment. Close your eyes. Lord, we come to you. We come to you to realign our walks with you, to realign our hearts with your will, and to offer our lives to you. If it's helpful, put your hand to your head. Lord, we think about all of the things that have gone through our mind. We think about all of the words we have spoken out loud or internally. The words of love and the words of anger. Lord, we confess that we have not always walked in your way. Place your hand on your heart. Talk to God about what is in your heart, what weighs it down, what lies there, what brings you joy, and what is bringing you sorrow, and offer those to God now. God, we confess that our hearts do not always turn to you, but sometimes to things of this world to bring comfort when you are the almighty comforter. Lord, we offer you our hearts. Help us to realign our hearts with yours. Take a moment and look at your hands. Hands that have served, hands that have rested, and talk to the Lord about the Lord about what the, your hands have done, both good and bad, and maybe the things left undone. Lord, we confess that our hands haven't always been instruments of peace. They haven't always been instruments of healing and of love. So, Lord, we give to you. Thank you, God. Friends, I'm going to ask that you join me in the prayer that is printed in your bulletin. Will you join me in prayer? And this is where we'll begin together. Praise to be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I will praise him. We are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 111, and I will be reading from the message interpretation. Alleluia. I give thanks to God with everything I've got, wherever good people gather and in the congregation. God's works are so great, worth a lifetime of study, endless enjoyment. Splendor and beauty mark his craft. His generous generosity never gives out. His miracles are his memorial. This God of grace, this God of love. 
He gave food to those who fear him. He remembered to keep his ancient promise. He proved to his people that he could do what he said. Hand them the nations on a platter, a gift. He manufactures truth and justice. All his products are guaranteed to last, never out of date, never obsolete, rust proof. All that he makes and does is honest and true. He paid the ransom for his people. He ordered his covenant kept forever. He's so personal and holy, worthy of our respect. The good life begins in the fear of God. Do that, and you'll know the blessing of God. His alleluia lasts forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pastor Brandy. All right, my young disciples, would you come on up? <clears throat> you are welcome to sit in this front pew, or if you would like, you can sit right here on these stairs. Come on down. Awesome. It is so good to have you all here today. Weepy. Hold on tight to that sunshine there. All righty. Cool shades. I love it. <clears throat> so, friends, we just heard a scripture reading from Psalm 111. And it talked about this word, hallelujah. And it talked about how God, well, essentially God is always with us. Okay, so I have um, a game. I want to see if, how good your silly faces can be, okay? So first, let's start with an easy one. Um, can you show me a face to show me that you're happy? <laughs> I see lots of good, 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 happy faces. All right, show me your sad faces. Oh, oh you made people, oh, yeah. Okay, Ta show me your scared faces. Oh, ooh, good scared faces. Okay, okay, what about your being goofy face? <laughs> I love it. I love it. These are all different things that we do with our faces when we are having different feelings. When we have feelings in our heart, that often shows on our faces. And when we are happy or sad, God is with you. When you are goofy, God is with you. When you are scared, God is with you. And so no matter what is on the outside of your face, God is with you. And so today for our grace space time, what you're going to do is we have two activities, okay? Woohoo! This is first a page that says, when I am scared, mad, sad, happy, feeling sick, or being goofy, God is with me. You got it, Aubrey. All right, so let's try this again. Um, you have to color it. You get to color it. And then after you are done coloring it, you get to make a mask. Yeah, silly masks, right? These are one of those scratch masks. So if I were to, like you were just showing me your angry face, right? Everyone will get one, and I'm going to make angry eyebrows on this guy, see? Ooh, ooh. Angry. Even when I'm angry, God is with me. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, no, you'll get a mask string at the end of worship today so you can wear it. Good question. How do you wear the mask? It's important. Yeah. No, that's just a tool to do your design. So you can make the designs of your mask any way you would like, okay? But what I want you to remember 
-hmm. What I want you to remember is that no matter how you're feeling, whether you're sad or heartbroken, that God is with you. If you're happy and joyful, God is with you. Okay? You are never alone no matter what happens. Okay? All right, let's say a prayer together and then we'll get you set up. Would you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for being with me. When I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm scared or angry, you are with me. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, friends, you're going to come over here into Grace Space. Once you are done making your mask and your coloring sheet, you may choose a quiet toy. We have our two activities first, okay? Mask and coloring sheet. And we have Miss Michelle and Miss Cindy to help you get set up. Hallelujah is one of those churchy words. We sing it in songs and we say it in prayers. We especially like to proclaim it during the Easter season, shouting it with joy as we remember Christ's victory over death. But do we really know what this word means? Or do we just think that we know what it means? Alleluia is a Hebrew word which translates praise the Lord. This word begins several psalms, including the one we just read, and is written as a command for the congregation to give praise to the Lord. As God's people, it is our duty to give God the glory which our creator and sustainer deserves. We give thanks and praise to a God who is good and true and trustworthy. A God who cares for God's people. A God who is with us and for us no matter where life takes us. In all of our experiences, good or bad, joyful or painful, when we are on top and when we think that we can't get any lower. We are called to praise the Lord whose steadfast love never fails. Many of the Psalms are attributed to David as the author. This shepherd boy turned king had a talent for putting his faith into words and music. I heard there was a secret chord David played and it pleased the Lord. You don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah, hallelujah. Throughout his life, David had a close relationship with God. 
singing praises to the Lord, David thanked God for the blessings bestowed upon him. After all, this was the boy who slew the giant Goliath, who won the heart of a king with his music, befriended the king's son, and eventually this shepherd boy became king himself. David was indeed blessed, and he knew to whom the credit was due. In his joy, he sang to the Lord, never forgetting that it was God who brought him where he was in life. His was a joyful alleluia. Faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to the kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew a hallelujah. 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 But then, as happens with all of us, even the faithful falter. This chosen king was not perfect, and even though his faith was strong, David sinned. He conspired to kill Bathsheba's husband because he wanted her for himself. The Bible is full of faithful people like David who try to follow God, but who also make mistakes and miss the mark. Yet we also see that when they turn to God and seek forgiveness, the Lord always shows mercy. And we too have this promise, for we also fall short of what God calls us to be. When we are broken by our sinfulness, when we fail to live up to God's purposes for our lives, when we come to God with humility and in confession, we are moved to give the God who forgives our praise. And even though our praises, our alleluias, are broken with our failures, we are met with mercy, forgiveness, and peace. A broken alleluia is still pleasing to God. Baby, I have been here before. I know this room and I've walked this floor. I used to live alone before I knew you. I've seen your flag on the marble arch. Love is not a victory march. It's cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 Many songs and poems have been written about love. It warms the heart. It makes us feel on top of the world as if we have won a great victory. But love is not always wonderful. Sometimes it requires sacrifice. Love in the Bible encompasses more than just the romantic environment, the romantic variety. Love often means being willing to make sacrifices of our time, energy, money, and talent for others. It's not always a triumphal victory march. Instead, sacrificial love has the potential to cost us a lot. It requires us to be vulnerable, to open ourselves up, 
to needs of others and to give of ourselves in the service for others. The greatest example of sacrificial love is Jesus' death on the cross. An innocent man hanging on a cross, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a quote from the first line of a Psalm of David, Psalm 22. And if you continue to read this Psalm, the author lays out his struggles, his hurt and his pain, even his feelings of feeling abandoned by God. But then the poem moves into praise. That's right, praise, alleluia. Even in the midst of sacrifice, in the midst of giving ourselves in love for another, we are called to praise the Lord, sending our alleluias of sacrifice heavenward. Was a time when you let me know what's really going on below. Now you never show it to me, do you? I remember when I moved in you, the holy dove was moving too, and every breath you drew was hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The journey of faith is not a straight path. Instead, it is filled with ups and with downs. Sometimes we feel close to God, while other times God seems so far away. When we have a close relationship with our Creator, we pray often, sharing the inner workings of our heart. We feel the Holy Spirit moving, leading, and guiding us. In these times, as we live in sync with God's purposes, every breath we take becomes an alleluia. Praise to the God who is always with us. Maybe there is a God above, but all I've ever learned from love was how to shoot at someone who outdrew you. It's not a cry you can hear at night. It's not somebody who has seen the light. It's cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 It is hard to praise God when we are surrounded by injustice. Violence, poverty, war, famine, you name it. Every day there is another tragic story told on the news and while we are tempted to turn away and not see the world as it truly is, we know that injustice happens all around us. These problems often feel too big and we tend to feel helpless to stop them. But with God's help, we are called to go out into this broken world, seeking justice, doing kindness, and walking humbly with our God. We know we cannot do it on our own. And so, even in the midst of injustice, we raise our broken alleluias, pleading for the Lord of Lords to work on the side of peace, justice, and mercy to heal the brokenness of our world. I did my best, it wasn't much. Couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. 
I told the truth, I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. On this journey of faith, we do our best to follow where God leads. Yet we don't always get it right, and faith does not always come easy. But when we offer our whole selves into God's service, God will take what we give and multiply it. The sound of our praise pleases the creator of the universe. And at the end of our earthly life, may we stand before the Lord of Song knowing that we brought all that we had, our talents and our weaknesses, our successes and our failures, our joyful laughter and our anguished tears, raising them all in alleluias to our God for in the end, our job is to always and eternally praise the Lord, singing. Alleluia. 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 and sing together our hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. This is 383 in your pew hymnal.
Friends, it is time in our worship where we pause to give thanks to God, sharing our joys and our concerns and any mission announcements today. Uh, I welcome those on Zoom. You are also allowed to share your uh, joys and concerns at this time. I ask for prayers for my brother, Joseph Gruber. He's 88 years old, and Wednesday he's undergoing hip, sur hip replacement surgery under high risk. Mm. Lord, we lift him up to you and ask for your mercy and healing and to guide his medical team. Uh, tomorrow, my family and I will be uh, taking some time away. So prayers for traveling mercies. <laughs> uh, uh, Pastor Harry Heinz will be with us in worship on September 1st. Uh, and if you have any needs, please be in contact with your deacon uh, during that time. I am thankful for um, the opportunity and the support from all of you uh, to, to take a little time away as we gear up for the wonderful things ahead. Any other joys or concerns? Yeah. Along those exact same lines, I am also taking this week off. Uh, it's a good week to take off, right? Um, the last week of the summer. Uh, so for uh, Chi Lai Presbyterian Church, Fred Mullen is going to be preaching for us on Sunday. And if you have any pastoral care emergencies, you can call Sandy, you can either call her in the office, or if she's not in the office, you can call her on her cell phone, and she will get a hold of Kevin Hershey, who will be on call uh, for me this coming week. And we have um, one prayer request from our Zoom chat. Please prayers uh, for Ken Pratt. This is from Barbara Pratt. He is having a lot of pain uh, due to his AL. Um, Lord, we lift up Ken and Barbara as she cares for him. Lord, we ask for an ease of pain and comfort and peace. Um, Lord, be with them and give them strength. And uh, <laughs> um, it's been a joy to be here today, so thank you for having us all and for allowing us to do this. It's been really great for, for Pastor Brandy, for Pastor Whitney. And so we, first of all, I thank you for all that. And to go along with that, no more announcements for tri -Light next week. Because we are away, and Pastor Brandy's away, and actually our live stream person is also away next week, there will be no live stream at tri -Light next week. Um, so if you're on live stream here at OPC today, just know that there will be no live stream next week at tri -Light as well. And also no prayer walk this week in the labyrinth, because Chile has a beautiful labyrinth trail on a piece of property down the road from them. Um, if you're ever looking for a walk in the woods, it is a lovely place to go check out. Um, yes. Uh, prayers for uh, my brother-in-law, Gary Buckter, who uh, broke four ribs uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, had to go back in for, um, he got readmitted because he has lots of fluid in his lungs. Um, they're gonna do a procedure Monday to clear it out. So, prayers for him. Absolutely, absolutely. Randy, we lift up your brother, and Lord, we ask for healing and guidance from the medical team. Um, Lord, provide a way, provide relief, and provide swift healing. All right, Daddy. Thankful for all the joy we've shared together with, with you last week and this week. I do have a prayer concern. Uh, you've been praying for my cousin for a really long time, and I really appreciate it. She had her surgery last week, and it went well. But she's back in ICU because of low blood count. Um, she went back in yesterday. So just continuing prayers that she'll continue to make good, positive recovery. Yeah. Thank you. Lord, we lift Mary up and ask for continued healing. Um, 
Lord, intervene, provide a way, provide strength and, and improvements in your holy name. Okay. Would you bow your heads in prayer? Holy One, we lift all of these things to you, the things mentioned and the things that remain in our heart. Lord, have your way. Lord, you are the almighty counselor. You are the way maker. You are the healer and the provider. Lord, we are trusting in you to provide. We are trusting in you to heal. We are trusting in you to shine a light in the path of the unknown ahead of us. Dear God, be with us. Hold our hands and strengthen us as we cry out, hallelujah. Praise be to you, God, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the situations we find us in. Lord, may we continue to praise you and lean into your warm embrace. Holy One, we lift this all up to you and we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite Jim Friday up uh, to share a, a moment of gratitude. This very building that you sit in. Okay, it's a suspense. Sorry. Wait for it. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jim Friday. I'm one of the trustees. I think I've been a trustee forever. Uh, <laughs> but we have a celebration this morning, but it requires a little background information first. And there we go. Okay, so what happened 213 years ago, what's not, what is now known as the town of Ogden. There we go. Right on. Uh, <laughs> a group of Christians felt the need for a, religious, to, for a religious service to gather. So on August 20th, 1811, uh, a meeting was held to discuss organizing a church. And then on November 4th, 1811, the, congregation, the Congregational Church of Parma was formed. Now the, the town of Ogden wasn't formed until 1817. So um, where did they meet? They, they met in homes, barns, a schoolhouse, even a tavern. So after sufficient funds had been gathered, the Congregational Church was constructed in 1824, the same sanctuary where I gathered in this morning. Uh, they did a pretty nice job, didn't they? <laughs> um, so this picture was taken sometime after 1869. And that's when the Sunday school room, this room right behind us, which we now use as the fellowship hall, when that was added. Um, so then in 1835, the church joined the presbytery and has been known as Ogden Presbyterian Church, or as we often refer to it as OPC, and I'm sure, you know, there's CPC. Uh, so in 11 years, we're gonna have another celebration. Um, so, to, com uh, to commemorate the 200th anniversary of our beautiful house of worship, a plaque is now on display along the front walkway. There it is. Um, also, there is, out here in our north entrance, there is a big wooden wheel, and people have often said, what does that wheel do? Well, if there's a... Um, a plaque out there, and it has some significant uh, dates on uh, the history of the church, and it has a couple pictures, and it shows what that wooden, big wooden wheel, it's, it's about this high, is all about. So if you'd like to, you know, take a look at that, it's, you go right out this door, out to the outside, you'll see it. And if you have any, uh, you know, any other uh, questions or anything about the history of the church, I'd be I'd be happy to, and uh, thankfully, a good friend of mine, 
um, gave me this book. She had she was cleaning out, and she found it. It's a history about Ogden, and it was dated 1967. And it had a lot of great information, and that's pretty much where the, the resource book for me. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And happy birthday to this building, 200 years old. We take this moment to give thanks, to give thanks for the people, but to also give thanks for the place to meet, this holy place that has been a safe and sacred place for so many for 200 years. We give thanks. It is when we give of our hearts, of our time, of our treasures, uh, that we are able to sustain our community, this building, our programming, our families, and our continue to grow our faith in God. And so we are going to take a moment and give our offering. And in this time, um, I encourage you to be talking with God. Talk about what is on your heart and what you may want to be giving in terms of time and talent uh, to your walk of faith. The uh, scripture that was read for us this morning, Psalm 111, there's a verse in there that says, He remembers to keep his ancient promise. He proved to his people that he could do what he said. That's why we sing this morning, because he planned it all. What though the way be lonely and dark the shadows fall, I know wherever it leadeth, my Father planned it all. I, I sing the shade and, and the sunshine. I'll trust him and never be fall. I sing for I cannot be silent. My father planned it all. There may be sunshine tomorrow. Shadows may break and flee. Will be the way he chooses the Father's plan for me. I sing through the shade and the sunshine. I'll trust him whatever befall. I sing for I cannot be silent. My father planned it all. He guides my faltering footsteps along the weary way. For while he knows the pathway will lead to landless days. A day of light and gladness On which no shade will fall Tis this at last awaits me My Father planned it all I sing the sudden I'll trust him whatever befall. I sing for I cannot be silent. My father planned it all. My father planned it
cry out to you, hallelujah. Praise be to you, Lord. I ask that you multiply and protect these gifts. Lord, may you nourish them and help them grow deep roots into your love. May they be a shining light of your kingdom. Lord, we offer these to you and we give praise and dedicate these offerings. Uh, we thank you for this building and we celebrate this moment of so many good things. In your name, amen. Our closing hymn is going to be Great is the Lord. This is uh, in your small hymn book, Sing the Faith. It's 2022 or on the screen. this week may bring. May we praise the God who is always with us. May praise be constantly on our lips. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in your hearts now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>